We live in a time with incredible computational resources and this also means that the amount and complexity of data which we can generate and store is growing rapidly. And at the same time, we as humans remain unable to really grasp such high dimensional data. We can nicely plot two dimensional data and understand it. We can maybe plot three dimensional data. But what if we have, a, let's say, 10 dimensional data set? There is no way that we can really visualize all this high dimensional data that we record. And this is why I believe that today it's more important than ever to find good ways how to compress large amounts of data into a human understandable form. And in this video I will show you a dimensionality reduction technique called encoder map which you can use for this purpose. And I think the best example to dive into dimensionality reduction is our planet. So our planet is this three-dimensional object, but displaying three-dimensional data is often inconvenient. And this is why we tend to use such two-dimensional representations of our planet. We can easily print this on paper or show it on a screen. So this is dimensionality reduction from 3D to 2D. Everyone knows this example, but we can apply the same idea to any data set, also of arbitrary dimensionality. And the goal is always to compress the information of some complex data set into a low dimensional representation, which we can intuitively understand. And there are many dimensionality reduction techniques. Encoder map actually combines two of these known dimensionality reduction techniques. The first of these two methods is a neural network autoencoder. The basic idea of an autoencoder is to train a network to reproduce its inputs. This can for example be done by minimizing such a cost function, where we take the squared differences between the inputs and outputs of the network. After training, the network should return the same numbers that we feed into the network. The clue of this procedure is that we introduce a bottleneck in the neural network architecture, in this case with two neurons. Now the network is forced to funnel all the information through this bottleneck. The left part, uh, the encoder part of the network, projects the data to a two-dimensional space. And the right part of the network, the decoder part, is optimized to reconstruct the full, in this case, three-dimensional data. In the following, I will use this little toy model for illustration. These are points randomly distributed on the edges of a cube with some Gaussian noise added. After some training, the outputs are similar to the inputs. This is what you can see here. We can also plot the numbers which we obtain from these bottleneck neurons. And this is how we can obtain the low dimensional projection of the data. Looking at this projection, we can however notice one problem of such a pure autoencoder. Let's first have a look at the map example again. Let's say we plan to travel from one city to another. Then we expect the distances between these two cities on our map to correspond to the actual distances between these two cities on the globe. A map which would not at all preserve the distances would be very confusing and probably useless for us. We expect things which are close together in the high dimensional space also to be close together in our map. And we expect things which are far apart in the high dimensional space also to be far apart in our map. It's this preservation of distances which makes a map intuitively understandable for us. If we again look at the autoencoder example, we can see that the distances are not well preserved here. All edges of the cube have the same length, but in a 2D map some of them are compressed and others are pretty stretched out. As the cost function only compares the inputs and outputs of the network, the only requirement for the low dimensional representation is that the decoder part of the network has to be able to reconstruct the input from this representation. There is nothing telling the network that preservation of distances might be valuable for us to obtain an intuitively understandable map. This is where the second method encoder map is based on comes into play. This is the cost function of a method called sketch map. 
Sketchmap is a variant of multidimensional scaling. The basic goal in multidimensional scaling is to arrange the points in the low dimensional map in such a way that pairwise distances in the low dimensional and the high dimensional space are equal. Transfer to the map example, this would mean we try to arrange cities in the map in such a way that all pairwise distances between these cities in the map are equal to their pairwise distances on the planet. Now obviously it's not possible to preserve all pairwise distances. It's simply not possible to squish a sphere into a 2D plane without having any distortions. And this is why the sketchmap cost function is based on these sigmoid functions of the pairwise distances. Tuning these sigmoid functions allows to select which range of the distances the optimization should focus on. The sigmoid functions are most steep around a parameter called sigma and therefore the optimization will mainly focus on distances close to this sigma value. In our world map example, we could for example say we care most about the distances between cities nearby and not so much about the distances to cities on the other side of the globe. Encoder map combines the autoencoder with this pairwise distance based cost function. Now, the first part of the encoder map cost function compares the inputs and outputs of the autoencoder. And the second part of the cost function compares the pairwise distances in the input space with the pairwise distances in this bottleneck space, also called latent space. You can see the influence of this addition to the cost function. The lengths of the cube edges are now better preserved and consequently also the densities of the points are more even. So maybe you ask yourself now, why do we even need the autoencoder? Can't we just arrange the points according to the pairwise distances? And the answer is yes, we could. But then we would lose some of the important advantages of the neural network autoencoder. And most importantly, we do not only get our low dimensional representation, but with the encoder part of the autoencoder, we also get a function which maps from this high dimensional space to the low dimensional space. And this way we can very efficiently add additional points to our low dimensional map. And we can also go the opposite way. With the decoder part of the network, we also get a tool which maps from the low dimensional space back to the high dimensional space. And this tool is actually quite fascinating to generate new high dimensional data points for any selected point in our low dimensional map. And there are also computational advantages. So training a neural network autoencoder is very efficient as we can do the calculations in parallel on a GPU and there are highly optimized machine learning libraries for these tasks. And another computational advantage is that we can train the network with stochastic gradient descent. And this means that we use batches of data, one batch of data at a time. And therefore the overall size of the data set is not limited. And Encoder map combines all these advantages of the autoencoder with the preservation of distances, which makes the maps more informative and easier to understand. If you would like to use encoder map, please check out our GitHub page where you can get the available software free of charge and it's very easy to use. If you want to know more about the details, please check out the encoder map article, which is published in the Journal of Chemical Theory and Computation. So in this video I explained the basic methodology and showed some results for a three-dimensional toy model. If you want to see how encoder map deals with truly high dimensional data, then check out our next video. So thanks for watching and if you appreciate such content, please let me know and leave a like. Thank you.